Hi, welcome back. Um, so we're going to talk about simplifying trigonometric expressions. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work through an example with you. And we'll talk about this as we go. So suppose you are asked to simplify secant theta over tangent theta. What this really means is try to get this rewritten into a form that uses as few trigonometric functions as possible. And now the weird thing is we have to blow it up before we can condense it down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to turn everything into cosine and sine. So what I really have here is 1 over cosine theta divided by sine theta over cosine theta. Now this is a complex fraction and it freaks some people out. So I'm going to show you an easy way to make it better. There's two ways we can think about this. We can think about this as 1 over cosine theta divided by sine theta over cosine theta. And we remember that division by a fraction means to take the second fraction, turn it upside down, and multiply. So this is the same thing as 1 over cosine theta times cosine theta over sine theta. Now the cosine thetas will cancel, and we are just left with 1 over sine theta. And we want to rewrite that as cosecant. And this is the simplified form of secant theta divided by tangent theta. Okay. We can use the same concept to prove identities. And you'll be occasionally asked to prove an identity. Um, so let's prove the identity one plus cotangent alpha divided by cosecant alpha equals sine alpha plus cosine alpha. So when, when we say prove an identity, what we're really saying is somebody told me this was true and I don't know if I believe it, so I want to see if I can make it happen myself. And we're going to do this exactly the same way we did the last example. So we're going to start with the left-hand side. And we are going to turn it into sines and cosines. So I've got 1 plus cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay. I sometimes get that upside down. And cosecant is 1 over sine, which means what I've really got is 1 plus cosine alpha over sine alpha multiplied by sine alpha over 1 or just sine alpha. Now when we distribute sine alpha all the way through, what we end up with is sine alpha plus cosine alpha over sine alpha multiplied by sine alpha. And remember that sine alpha is actually over 1. So those cancel. And we are left with sine alpha plus cosine alpha. And we have successfully proven the given identity. So we are done because we started with 1 plus cotangent alpha over cosecant alpha, which was my original left-hand side. 
and I ended up with sine alpha plus cosine alpha, which was my original right-hand side. And that is really all there is to proving an identity. Sometimes we have to use dirty tricks. So let's do one more and I'll demonstrate the dirty trick. And this is really the most common dirty trick that we use. Cosine squared alpha. So we're asked, we're asked to prove the identity that cosine squared theta over one plus sine theta equals one minus sine theta. So let's, let's talk about how we're gonna do this. Um, there's a couple of different ways to approach this, but either way, we're gonna have to use the fact, remember what we know, we can't turn everything into sines and cosines because we've already only got sines and cosines. But here's what I do know. I know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one, which means that I could rewrite this as cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Or I could write sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. They're all the same thing. So let's set, let's work with this identity. I'm, I know, I'm told that cosine squared theta divided y1 plus sine theta equals one minus sine theta. And I'm not sure I believe it. So we're trying to either convince ourselves that this is true or convince ourselves that this is false. But our only tool is good algebra. So I don't like fractions, so let's get rid of this one by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So I end up with cosine squared theta equals one minus sine theta times one plus sine theta and I remember from previous math classes that a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. So this tells me that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta because 1 squared is 1. And let's look at what I just wrote down. Oh, look at here, I wrote down that cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta because cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. So if I really wanted to, I could add sine to both sides, sine squared to both sides, and I end up with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. And we know that is true, so therefore, we have proven the cosine squared theta divided by one plus sine theta does indeed equal one minus sine theta. Okay, those are the basic techniques and tactics of this section. The only other type of problem you will run into is one that says that if tangent theta equals two sevenths and theta is in the third quadrant, find cosine theta. And I'll show you how to do this. So what do we know? We know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So we know The tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. And we know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. So we can do this, right? We know that 
sine theta over cosine theta has to equal two sevenths because we know that tangent theta equals two sevenths, which means that sine theta equals two over seven times cosine theta. Now we can do some work with our Pythagorean identity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two sevenths cosine theta and I'm gonna put it in the place of sine theta in my Pythagorean identity. So what I end up with is cosine squared theta plus two sevenths cosine theta squared equals one, which means that cosine squared theta plus four forty ninths cosine squared theta equals one. Add my cosines together, and this is really 49 over 49 cosine squared theta. So what I have is 53 over 49 times cosine squared theta equals 1, which means that cosine squared theta is equal to 49 over 53. So cosine theta equals positive or negative square root of 49 over 53, which is 7 over square root 53. Now, do I want the positive or the negative? Well, let's see. Well, let's make an actual circle. That's better. Third quadrant puts me down here somewhere, which means that my cosine is negative. So I want the negative. So this isn't very much different than how we did this when we were using sine and cosine. The only difference is we started with tangent and used that relationship to sine and cosine to find the answer. Now there's another way to do this and I will show you that in a subsequent video.